I can only apologise about the wind. Oh, frog! Oh, no. Pigs fly now. <laughs> it's a very good pair. Look at that. A bit of a Marmite car. There it is. Do you know what I found? This guy has not had a good day. Today we are heading to Bicester Heritage for the classic car show of Great Britain and I'm really looking forward to it because it seems like a mini Goodwood. We haven't had any Goodwood events like the Festival of Speed or the Revival this year and today's event looks to be making up for that. So I'm in the Cobra, we're going to park in the classic car parking and enjoy the rest of the day, hence the, uh, the Steve McQueen shirt. Oh. The Invicta S1, I think. That's very rare. Red wheels, that's brave. That is brave. Hold on. Classic car driving. So it looks like we're going to park next to my other favourite car, a Dodge Viper. <laughs> so we've got a Dodge Viper RT10 with stripes. A few cars ahead of us. Can I park with the Viper? Go by the Viper, yeah. Yeah. All the way down the edge. Thank you. Aww. Aww. I wanted to park with him. Okay, let's have a look around. The Viper is heading for a Dodge Viper stand, which is in the show. So here in comes the Invicta. Here we are in the classic car park, and the entrance is literally just there. But we're going to have a look down there at some of the cars that are also in the car park before we go in. First of all, the Army have arrived. There's a lot of classics, there's a few modern cars, a lot of interesting machinery. I know you want to see the Volvo, but I'm making a beeline for this GT40 in the classic Le Mans livery. I'm not sure who made this GT40, but it it looks outstanding. Some of them don't look quite right, but this one looks great. There are, as ever, a lot of MGBs. There's a Maserati, is that a 3500 Superleggera? And another Cobra. This one looks like a AK kit. It's not a Dax. I think it's an AK. And we have a Ford Sierra, a Cosworth, and an Aston Martin Lagonda. And next to the XJS is a very special Bertone-designed Lamborghini Espada. You don't see a lot of these very often. He's got his driving gloves on display on the dashboard and an Aston Martin DB7 GT with the classic lipstick around the grille and opposite a D-Type and 356 both replicas but looking stunning in the sun further down from the 356 and the D-Type we've got a couple of rubber bumper MGB GTs and this looks initially to be a 250 GTO replica but no this is a Matra they are not very well known and I don't know much about them but I recognize other than the badging the Matra shape I've seen one of these at Goodwood. They've got a very squared rear end in contrast to the front end. An unusual looking car but it's called the Matra Bonnet. Just had a man walk past very annoyed that I said the Matra looks like a 250 GTO replica. Very annoyed. <laughs> We've got a TVR Chimera in a chameleon colour, green with purple, next to an MG RV8. This was MG's attempt at bringing back the MGB shape into a modern 90s slash noughties form, competing with the TVR Chimera, and the TVR was the more desirable of the lot, but this has the same engine, 3.5 litre Rover V8, although the TVR bought it out to 4 litres, 4.5 litres, and finally the 5 litre. This one appears to be a 4.5 litre Chimera. And then yes, the 3.5 litre Rover V8. Next to a light scimitar and a Triumph Stag, we've got the Mercedes beyond that, so it's a 280 SL also, and a 911 with a bit of a livery. I love a livery. So we are in, and the first section is a car club section, so we've got numerous different stands and tents, but if it's all right, I'm gonna make a beeline for the Vipers, because I really wanna see them and see if any are for sale, maybe. I can only apologize about the wind, but as you can tell, I can't control that. I am not God. Or am I? First of all, rather similarly, you've got the Corvette Owners Club. We've got some Stingrays. We've got a gorgeous orange C1. I really like a C1 Corvette, and they are undervalued in my opinion. And at the other end of the Corvette stand, we've got this wide body Stingray in a gorgeous shade of purple. That looks very unique in front of another C1. And next along, we've got the Mustang. So we've got the SVT Cobra on display here. We've got Fast Matt with the 5 litre V8. We've got a large sport 
spoiler and a bolt-on wide arch kit on this Mustang. This is a deranged body kit with AR Racing performance parts attached to it next to another 5 litre from a previous generation and another GC4 and next along we have the Dodge Vipers so one day I would love to own one of these ideally blue with white stripes or maybe even red with white much like the GTSR homage over there which we'll have a look at in a bit but yes a GCS from the 90s would be my dream I have put an offer on one already I didn't get it but one day I'll find the perfect example for me we've got the RC10 that we came in with as well we've got some later Dodge Vipers they have now ceased production unfortunately we've got another RC10 next to an SRT10 which is matte black with gold stripes and a carbon fiber spoiler still with the side pipes matching a lot of the other models and then we've also got two Viper ACRs we've got the SRT10 ACR and the later generation ACR with the black and red stripes we've got another SRT10 and then we have the GTS with the GTSR kit on it which is my favorite car that I get to see at a lot of these events Event. I really enjoy seeing this car and beyond the Vipers it's a very unusual car this apparently is called a WB specifically a WB special it almost looks like a replica of the classic Lotus 11 race car now there have already been a lot of replicas including mine today I've just spotted something else which is very special I am pretty sure it is another replica this is a Ferrari 250 California replica so this isn't a BMW Z3, I don't think, but a lot of them are based on BMW Z3s. And we do have a fact sheet to tell us exactly about it, so... Oh, it's a Z3, okay. So this is a BMW Z3! <laughs> so normally you can you can tell by the windscreen, because they keep the original Z3 windscreens, but it's had a bit more done to it, so it's still got the original straight six Z3 engine. They have completely transformed the interior, like the, the untrained eye would not recognize the BMW-ness of this car. They would presume it to be a 20 million pound Ferrari 250 California, but um, in fact, no one's actually paying any attention because it's parked down by the portos, unfortunately but it still looks fantastic I'd love to know how much this is worth obviously 80 80,000 80, okay okay we can work with that we can work with it it's a pretty good one because as I said some of them don't actually have much changes to them but this one's had a lot done to the original platform it's probably just chassis and engine and then everything else is bespoke who's this guy it's a meerkat of some it's sort. a meerkat used every day this car it's the daily Jensen Healy. Then we've got the Austin Healy section with a range of 3,000 and a tiny frog-eyed sprite. Sorry, did you hear me go, mmm, frog? <laughs> it's a frog, it's green as well. You might as well have it in green. <laughs> it's a frog. Oh look, there's a Range Rover owners club and they've camped over in their tent. We've got some Vauxhalls and Opal Mantas on display in front of the Bristol owners club. Very unique styled grills on these Bristols. Very easy to tell a Bristol from any other car. I mean, check out the style of these ones. Two litre straight. Straight six. Oh, someone's aftermarket alarm. Oh no. Is that a? There's an Alpina B7. We've got an Alpina E34 5 Series, and there's a BMW Z1. Oh, look at the dog. Oh look. Oh my God. Look at all the pink. Chloe's heading to the pink. Oh look at Renault Aventine. Oh, there's a flying pig. Pigs fly now. And further on from the Renaults, we've got the Alpines as well, including A110s and some more classic Alpine Renaults, including the GTA and this glorious Renault 5 Turbo. We've got a range of sunbeams. All of these appear to be Tigers. The Tiger has the V8, the Alpine does not. See the sunbeam Alpines as an AC Ace and the Tigers as a Cobra. The Tigers have the V8, the Alpines do not. You have a notification for me. This Sally has a, a plush toy replica of herself on her dashboard. There's a little owl. That'd be my cup. No. Apologies for the wind noise. We've also got the Southern Mini Owners Club, apparently, uh, with, with an E-Type, a 996 Carrera 4S. Ah, there's a Mini. That's been lifted. Is this on, like, a Land Rover chassis? Let's have a read. It's the Monster Mini. It's a Su Mini, so Suzuki. And we've got the uh, Fiat 500 Owners Club, which give us a chance to play a game of what's inside your car. On today's episode, we have a chicken. 
<laughs> what was that? <laughs> I know I'm cute and cuddly, please look and admire, but do not touch. Check out this one, this is a proper dragster, this one. I'm imagining there's going to be a parachute. There he is. No wheelie bar, though. I imagine a lot of these guys are handy with a bit of spit and polish. We've got this Chevy Coupe with the Chevrolet 355 V8, which is for sale, looking very clean. Here is the Porsche Owners Club. We've got a 996, a 944 S2. We've got both 911s revealing their engines. We've got a 996 Turbo, a space here. I guess someone didn't make it and a Turbo S. Wait a minute, oh no, there is a car. I almost didn't see that. And beyond the DeLorean, we've got this. This is a very interesting car. It's called the Dowett Comet. It used to be the Avanti Barchetta, which was built by Ant Anstead in the factory that Dax used to be. But now they call them the Comet. It's been slightly reimagined. This one has a hard top. There are convertibles available. They have LS7s. They are built bespoke for the owner. And it's my first time I'm seeing one of these here today. The Barchessa is the convertible variant and the Comet is the hardtop. Very cool to see that here. Now, if it's okay with you guys, before we venture forwards to the rest of the show, we're actually gonna go backwards to the classic car car park where I am parked. Not because I've forgotten anything, but because I've just spotted a very special car that is parked right next to me. Now, as, as of yet, I don't yet know if it is real or if it's a replica. Obviously, nothing wrong with replicas. That's why I've got a replica. I love replicas, but, it's just the value. It looks like a replica from here. It's a pretty good pair. It's a very good pair. Look at that. You see, everyone's looking at my car. They're ignoring the Ferrari 250 short wheelbase. I'm gonna, I'm gonna claim that to, well, I think, look at the number plate, 12 short wheelbase. So whilst this may look very genuine and the plate search comes back as a Ferrari 250, it's not an original 250 short wheelbase, but it is an original Ferrari 250. This has been converted into a Ferrari 250 short wheelbase. You could call it a replica, but most call it a recreation because it is a Ferrari 250 chassis underneath. But it still looks absolutely remarkable with a hefty price tag compared to other replicas out there because it's still a Ferrari. It's a Ferrari 250. It's just been rebodies to resemble that of a 250 short wheelbase. There we have it. So you might have heard a lot of cars on the track, which is just over there. And I'm now in the paddock for all of the competing cars for today. So we've got a couple of Subarus here with the two Audi Sports Quattros in their classic rally livery, looking fantastic. We've also got the 3.4 litre Mark 1 Jag next to is that a Cooper? I believe this to be a classic Cooper competition race car with the single roll bar flowing down the interior, which is beyond an Alfa Romeo GTA Junior. And then we have a genuine Jaguar C-Type next to a very rare Ferrari 212 into Berlinetta. And beyond another Cooper, we have some older era cars that I don't know quite as much about. But there's one over here, that is a Bugatti. I don't know if that's a Type 35 or what particular Bugatti that is, but it's sounds remarkable but yes here are the vintage and pre-war race cars that have been competing today then we've got another Jaguar C type an Austin Healey 100 and a Mini Marcos look how tiny that is with the mini light wheels and what on earth are these this one is a Peugeot and beyond these we've got this glorious Alfa Romeo and Maserati race car we've got another Bugatti a Benetton Formula One car a Lotus, and then the noise of this Bugatti sounds incredible. <sighs> right, now we enter the rally car section with a lineup of Subarus and a 205. This is a Subaru Legacy RS rally car, which taught Subaru all they needed to know about rallying before they started with the Impressors. These ones have the classic 555 livery and gigantic spotlights on the front. We've got an E30 M3 over here as well with a Porsche 996. And then we've got the Ford Puma rally car next to a Delta Integrale, a Porsche 911, and here is a Maserati birdcage. Next along we have the Demon Tweaks E30, which is being used as a seat. We've got a Triumph Dolomite Sprint and a, a, a golf buggy. Uh, next door to a Ford Sierra and a Mark 1 Golf, a Mark 1 Escort and another Sierra. And this is something a little bit different. This is a Mercedes 500 SLC, which has been converted into a rally car. He is next door to a Mark 3 Escort and a couple of Mark 2s, including an RS2000. 
apologies for the wind once again. Now at the front of this lineup apparently is a Kellinson. I just read the badge of that one. I do not know anything about that car. But then we have the 2002, the Austin A35 and a Ford Capri. So yes, cars are getting ready to go out again. The Cooper is running and I'm going to head out the paddock to let them get on with the day. Who's this rolling through? Am I going to have to back away? Oh, he's coming in. What have we here then? That is a Delage. Up. Look at that, that looks incredible. So we're now entering the traders section. We've got total head turners who specialize in a lot of Cobra replicas. Right to the front, we've got this Superformance Cobra in a uh, chameleon color flip color, usually synonymous to TVRs, but interesting to see this color on a Cobra kit. But yes, this is Superformance, which are mostly found in America. America's love a Superformance kit. You'll notice the uh, bulges are a bit more bulgy and, and bubbly and muscular. This one is for sale for £70,000. It's got the real knock-off spinners and what looks to be the 15-inch Halle brand with the higher profile tyres, which would be ideal on mine. Further down we've got a recently repainted Jaguar E-Type. And along here we've got a bit of a Marmite car in more senses than you'd initially think. This is a Volkswagen camper van pickup with Marmite branding on it. It's got the rusty bodywork, the Marmite logos, the yellow tinted headlights and yellow tinted windows. So that's its Marmiteness in that sense. In another sense it's a Marmite car because as you can see it has been converted into an electric car which in itself makes this a bit of a Marmite car. And you could say the same about all of the cars under their tent. These are all Marmite cars because they have been converted into electric vehicles. Even an electric Triumph Stag. There it is. So earlier we saw the 250 short wheelbase that was parked next to me which was fantastic. But that one wasn't strictly genuine. However, this one is. But you may or may not notice some differences between this one and the other one we saw earlier. And that is because this one is a 250 short wheelbase competizione. It's absolutely stunning. With the and further on, we've got the Austin Healy 3000. This is the Mark III next to a 12C Spider. Oh, there's a Ford GT. I did not spot that earlier. He is on his way home. And beyond the 12C is this, which is a replica, but looks just as gorgeous as the original 500K. The Mercedes 500K is what this is resembling. Looks spectacular with a very long bonnet. I'm not sure what this once was, but you can probably work it out for yourself if you are familiar with that dashboard. So we've now found like the back corner of Mr. Heritage and an AC8. Now this one is finished in British racing green with green leather interior and the wooden steering wheel. So far today we've kind of had three Ferrari 250s. We've had the replica 250 California based on the BMW Z3. We've had the 250 short wheelbase recreation based on another Ferrari 250 and we've had the genuine Ferrari 250 short wheelbase competizione. Behind me we have a fourth Ferrari 250 and this one is real as well. We have a Ferrari 250 Lusso. This one has been brought along by GTO Engineering and is a genuine Ferrari 250 Lusso. More of a grand touring variant of the 250 but still just as sporty as the short wheelbase. So it shares the same short wheelbase as the short wheelbase but is more of a 2 plus 2 tourer. But next door to that we've got this which is a Ferrari 575 Super America which is the convertible variant of the 575 that they made very few of. 559 of these were made and this one in particular looks absolutely stunning. The headlights have been simplified as well as the roof being chopped off with its glass panel which opens like that. So there we go, four Ferrari 250s, one replica, one recreation and two genuine 250s. Now in front of me we've got another rarity. This is a Caterham 21. 
They didn't make too many of them. It wasn't much of a success for Catrum in the 90s. It's got Ford Mondeo rear lights as well, which is quite something to behold. So we're now in the main part of Bista Heritage. You'll notice all these individual buildings are each a company in itself. We've got a Lotus Esprit Turbo behind us and a few more cars that are on display. So a few of the businesses have opened up to display what they're all about. A lot of them are car related. So you've got workshops, restorers, interior specialists, tyre specialists and here we've got this Rolls Royce Ghost in front of a large collection of classics. There are a few classics just driving around at the moment including the Land Rover and the 911. They're just, I don't know why they're driving. But there they go. We've also got some more Porsches over there, including well, that's 911, which is in the livery of one of the 917Ks. And then in the distance over there, we've got a Sebring MGB. We've got a gorgeous Citroen DS Cabriolet. We've got this, which is a Lagonda. And further along is this, which is an AC. This is a 428 Coupe. The name refers to its 428 big block V8 under the hood. That's about seven litres of V8 power under that long bonnet in this luxury two-seater Tourer. In one of the buildings we've got the very happy Frog Eye Sprite and on the ramp over there a TVR wedge. And around this side we have Ferrari 250 number five of the day. This one looks to be a replica of the 250 GTO right in the corner at the end over there. So we venture around to the final section. Do you know what I found? I don't have enough fingers, I need to use the other hand. Five plus plus one. We've got 250 number six. Another Ferrari 250 short wheelbase. Once again, this one is a recreation, not one of the genuine ones, but even still, Ferrari 250, number six of the day. So it has the chassis of a 250 GTE, but all genuine Ferrari parts, creating an almost like-for-like -like replica of the original short wheelbase. And if you're wondering, the 250 GTO we saw earlier was based on a Datsun. We've got a few barns over here with some niceties in there, including this Cobra that you can just about see. And we've also got this gorgeous De Tomaso Pantera around the corner, which has another Sebring MGB. In fact, that's not a Sebring. It's got the chrome bumpers, but the Sebring competition livery on it. And we conclude this section with an AC, a seeker. So we had six Ferrari 250s in total. We had two replicas, one based on a Datsun, one based on a Z3. We had two which used genuine Ferrari 250 chassis from a GTE and two genuine Ferrari 250s. They were the Lusso and one of the short wheelbases, which was a Competizione. We are now heading back into the main show to conclude the day. And now within the trade stand section, we are with Ian at Pop Bang Color, who has just started a drawing of my Nissan 350Z. Now during lockdown he did my Cobra which looks fantastic and now one of his continuous art prints will be my 350Z. So we are just watching him, he's just put the colour on the paper, there we go. But we'll come back to that a bit later. So to conclude the day we are back in the car park. This guy has not had a good day today, he's cutting off his splitter. We've got a few more cars that have come in since we had a look. We've got this glorious TBR Tuscan next to the Triumph Spitfire and another Cobra over there. I believe that to be a replica as well. So this is a Hawk 289. And behind us we've got these happy campers who have even put out a plant pot for their stay. They are sat inside reading the news with their plant plots. Plant plot. <laughs> then we've got this gorgeous Jaguar E-Type Series 1 looking fantastic in the sunlight. I love this time of day when the sun is hitting the cars just nicely. You get the right angle and each car looks incredible. So it's got to the evening and I've got word that Ian has finished my 350Z so we're going to take a look at now. There it is, the 350Z with the roof down. That's back when it was working. That looks fantastic. Thank you very much. Pop Man Colour on Instagram. So here we are, the continuous art print of my 350Z. You may have seen my cover that I posted on Instagram a few weeks ago, but there we go, the 350Z. So check out the links below for all the details for Pop Bang Colour so you can check out the rest of his artwork. But as you can tell by the beautiful sunset in the background, the day has come to an end. So I hope you enjoyed that video. A great selection of classics and replicas like my Cobra. So follow me on Instagram for the highlights and updates about these events that I go to. But for now, thanks for watching.